think that that's a big one. And then also getting it outside of DACA, yes. where there would be a great hunger. In fact, in, in fact other than DACA, I think you have uh, in Chiribal, Rakshahi, Bogra, Kulna, and Narayan, which this five places we have uh, art colleges. But I think it's expensive. Public, public art colleges. Yes, yes, public art. And, and so you, you write. And one of did the they answer your question? Uh, yes. Sorry, I was saying this. One of the things that we, we've been talking about in the public space, and I'm on the you know, small panel, <coughs> is uh, government minister in, in India on art in public spaces. Is we've been trying to, uh, for all public buildings that are going to be built, we allocate a very small portion of that part to, to the art and to building art for that building. So when you have walk ins of regular people, they interact with art. And it's, 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 a, it's something that, we, that we, went, we learned from Germany because they use a lot of public spaces for us. And um, it's, like, it's like you may get a water connection certificate, unless that criteria is met, you won't get the building certificate to start off. So it's as you give it as, as equal importance as building of the regular uh, infrastructure. So those kind of things is what you some percentage of, of the construction of the building. Yes. If you go to Seoul, you'll, you'll be amazed at how much yes. public art there is. Because in, in order to build, you have to allocate, like, I think it's something like 30% of your construction budget to public art. Wow. Is that something you this, could be, this, this could be one of the best ways to ensure that you know, in every building there's a space to think. And, you know, the, 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 and there's a creative artwork. And, and in most buildings, I was so last year, and and I was I was so thrilled and to see this the whole city, which is one of the most modern and busiest city. But this artwork was giving so much of you know sort of re joy in people. <laughs> and I think this is what we need here. And I'm sure that our city to think and you know the, 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 and, and there's a creative artwork and and in most buildings I was so last year and and I was I was so thrilled and to see this the whole city, which is one of the most modern and busiest city, but this artwork was giving so much of, you know, sort of re-enjoying people. <laughs> and I think this is what we need here, and I'm sure that our city planners and architects will definitely do something about it, and we will also, uh, you know, try our best. And, and, and thank you very much for pointing out this. And another thing I would like to comment on is that the Bangladeshi female artists are also coming out. I mean, you know, I would say that they are equal participants, and, and, and they're doing so good. And I, that gives me, uh, in fact, a lot of joy and confidence that that is 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 well participated from gender point of view. You know, it's not only men. So it's it's, it's, it's it's I think we are very well placed, well poised, and. Did I answer your question? Thank you. Thank you. Well, that brings us uh, to uh, a point as well um, that hopefully uh, the next summit we are going to be attending, there will not just be attendance from galleries in Dhaka, but also uh, all the other cities that you're uh, mentioning. And uh, students and artists from those areas are also represented. So it's, even though the name is Dhaka Art Summit, it has to be all-consuming for Bangladesh to have a fair representation. And I have to say, I mean, you know, in India, yes, uh, there is an initiative with public art, but I cannot overemphasize how important it is to have that. And no pressure to all the private collectors here, because I think you all are in a influential position to make that happen. And we have to always create that kind of money. So for example, we've worked with spaces that are under construction, do not get built. And uh, we open it out to projects for artists to do temporarily. We just take it off. So it's not it's not something that you have to always want to contribute to. You support it by space. And actually, um, you know, fortunately, Bangladesh's economy is doing very, very well in comparison to work the global economy. But one of the artists who came here from the United States, what she does um, also is she works in New York, and Panji probably seen that you. Know, um, Shops that are not open at the time, they put in installations there. It's a great initiative uh, there. So, you know, it's a it's, it's very nice way for artists to get to show their work and also to have that type of interaction with the public, which you're talking about there. So, that it brings joy. Okay.
Thank you very much. And with that, I uh, would open this panel to the audience for any questions you have for any of them. Can someone give them the mic? To a specific person or to anybody in the panel? It's common to Kafka as well as West Bengal as well as Bangladesh. There's a huge amount of humidity um, and that adds a lot of fungus and related problems. But then there are restorers, at least in India, who can eat things and there's uh, intact which does uh, large restoration work and it's a, can be a, uh, it can be a government initiative to invite restorers. I think it's a role of things, not that important. Yeah, no, I think we, it's the awareness that people are actually getting concerned about these things. Like also when Lauren mentioned that the accessibility of having archival material, you know, the paper or the back backing board, the mat one is using, I think it's the awareness and it'll come. And in fact, uh, there's a, uh, one of the finest conservatives from India has uh, come to Dhaka to, uh, for the art fair and she's here. And uh, she actually, I asked her the same question. What Excuse do you me, see? Because conservation and restoration is one of the key things one has to address when, um, when you deal in art from the modern masters or even for contemporary works. And she said, you know, there are collectors who, who I'm already working for in Bangladesh, so which is a very good sign. And hopefully, um, the museum will take an initiative as well. And I hope there are curators from the museum in the audience or this message will get to them that actually these conservators are accessible here. Yes, and also just partnerships, even government to government partnerships. We've been very fortunate um, to have a project called the Ambassador's Fund for Cultural Preservation and getting to work closely with the Varindra Research Museum. And any of you who are from Bangladesh probably know in Rajshahi, there's one of the most beautiful collections of um, uh, pre-Islamic and Hindu and uh, 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 really ancient uh, sculptures and, and terracotta. And so we're working with that public institution uh, to do some restoration work. And been, the government's been very uh, supportive. And, the, um, uh, uh, we've been, and also the Render Research Museum itself. Um, and when I went to that space, I thought, if you know, the Smithsonian could see this, you know, or if the, if the Met, which has just opened up this beautiful Islamic wing, could see this, then you know, there would be a lot of interest possibly in you know, uh, some sort of a partnership. So we're lucky in our way with the U.S. Embassy, but I think um, different um, you know, embassies that are represented, different governments that are represented, I think that could really be an opportunity as well. So if, if the National Museum or others were interested in that type of partnership, I think there would be a willingness essentially from some foreign governments, including mine. And there are a few artists who have been trained especially by Norwegian Cup. I know I met a few of them and, and I think uh, you're right. I mean, this is uh, especially Bangladesh weather, you know, and you really need to look after all this uh, artwork because uh, the weather condition and I think we need more of those restoration work and be aware and it's coming up and, and, and it's just part of everything, you know, how to restore, how to preserve. Thanks. Anyone else from the audience? Um, I'm Shahrukh Rahman, and I do some writing, translation, and also I love art. Uh, what I want to say is that I think you, if you include folk craft and art, folk art, mm. that is also a very important part of art. And uh, in our country, there is a very rich tradition of folk craft, which uh, includes every part of the household of life, from making pita to embroidery, stitchery, stitch craft, every part of life. Even the mat that is spread when a guest comes in a village home, that also is done very beautifully uh, as a part of folk craft. So what I was thinking that terracotta has a tendency of, uh, of uh, not getting tarnished or spoiled. So I think we should also encourage uh, development because uh, I think
think uh, folk art has its own space uh, as opposed to, let's say, contemporary art. And it's not necessary that one has to blend, but it can be a parallel movement that one can, you know, someone like, someone could come up with an initiative just like Nani and Rajiv did and run with it. Yes. 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 That was excellent. You summed it up perfectly. And uh, it is why we are all here from all over the world. Uh, because we are interested and we see hope, we see the future. And so there is definitely future. Now, in lieu of time, we have one last question we take from um, the lady from Tro. And also, oh, all right, two last questions. Down the second last. Um, I'm Afroja Jameer, I'm one of the participating artists. Um, called uh, uh, Nijeke Prokashkaro, uh, Express Yourself, Express Yourself. And uh, it was a great project, but it was beautifully curated. And, and actually, um, uh, at the same time, we were lucky because uh, Nadia and Rajiv did a, did a show at the same time for Dhaka Art Center. It was also beautifully curated. So it all came together in this moment of people saying, this is what really beautifully curated shows look like. And I was saying, you know, so how do we do, how do we raise what comes from saying, how do we do this? And one of the things is, here's my pitch for studying abroad. It's an education USA or education Italy, because I see the Italian ambassador there, is you know, getting that graduate especially, in, yes, the, the very strong BFA education here, and also even the MFA education. They're going on and getting the graduate uh, study in the arts abroad. And it answers parts of uh, Jahangir's excellent points, all of which I uh, take on. I think one of the ways also that Bangladesh will um, move itself forward in the international art market is by getting out internationally. And you know, several artists are, are doing that already, but you know, especially with the young artists. And I think that through, I would say, specifically graduate study. And if you're interested in graduate study, or if you have anyone who's interested in graduate study in the United States, I'm happy to talk to you. We have great uh, art institutions there. But, but actually worldwide, I think that's where the curating background is going to come from. It's going to have, it's a taught, that is a taught um, skill. And it's not going to come up organically. It really needs to be taught through you know, the people who do it the best. But at the same time, I would, I would say that this also needs to be developed at home. And you can just, not everybody has the privilege to study abroad. And I think it's important for the universities in Dhaka and elsewhere to try and create this curriculum. Even if, even if you don't have a formal department, you can start it. I mean, these curatorial study programs are actually quite new even in the West. Most curators, before these programs came along, studied art history. So, I think it's important to, and it's something that we promote at the magazine, is to have writers on the ground writing about their own work. Because I think there's nothing more infuriating is when someone misinterprets your artwork and doesn't understand the context. And I think um, all of you will have access to all the panelists here, even after we are done. So please be free to talk to all of them. I mean, um, you have Arvizia Pacific's, you know, editor and publisher right here to talk about any, you know, forums on writing or curatorial practice, education abroad, or get hold of him <laughs> in the home ground and make sure, you know, there uh, he he and other people in this room can make a difference.